Hello Year 10 and welcome to Lesson 7 of Physical Landscapes in the UK, focusing on coasts. Now, this week's learning, we're going to be looking at hard and soft engineering of coastlines. So we'll get started with our do now task. I'd like you to look at the image that you can see in front of you and write down in the back of your books the answers to the following three questions. So what can you see happening in this area of Norfolk? I want you to think about the social effects and the economic effects of these. So pause the video here and then you can have a go at answering these questions. So hopefully your answers are coastal erosion. You can see the coastline retreating there and mass movement. The social effects, as you can imagine, are the um, impacts to the people's well-being that actually live there. Imagine how worrying it would be to have the coastline retreating at such a fast rate. And also think about the economic effects. So think about the um, effects of the house pricing and land value of the people that live there as well. OK, so today's title, if you want to write it down, please, um, is Managing Coasts, Hard and Soft Engineering. And you will need the reference to the textbook pages 106 to 111, which follow on these slides. Now, what we're going to be looking at is identifying the reasons for coastal management, looking at hard and soft engineering, categorising them into hard and soft and explaining the advantages and disadvantages of each method. So on your PowerPoint, obviously, you can refer back to these when you attempt the um, exam questions um, and activities. So first of all, why do coasts need to be managed? I'd like you to create a quick spider diagram of the reasons why they need management and why we don't just leave them alone to erode. So pause the video here and have a go at your mind map. So hopefully some of the points you put on there are the fact that coastlines are very popular and tend to be very populated. They have high um, economic value and bring in money through tourism. Um, unfortunately, they can um, flood, especially in um, stormy seasons. And they are also very fragile ecosystems that need um, monitoring and looking after. So we'll move on. I'd like you to pause the video here um, and have a little watch of the video that will describe the hard engineering technique, soft engineering, and then managed retreat. And then we'll go through each one of them one by one. So here is a subtitle for you. What are the coastal management options? I'd like you to create a little table and separate the hard and soft engineering methods into them. You can check your answers here. Now what we'll do is we'll go through each one one at a time, what are they and what are their advantages and disadvantages as a method of protecting the coastline. So in your resources this week you do have a copy of this table that you can uh, digitally type in your description, your advantages and disadvantages. So let's get started. So we'll start with the seawall. Now you can see here, obviously these are concrete barriers um, and they are recurved, which means that when the wave actually approaches a swash, uh, the energy from the wave is sent backwards and dissipated back out um, into the sea um, to prevent erosion. Now you can see that we've categorised the advantages into social, economic and environmental. You would just like to pick a couple of advantages and a couple of disadvantages of this method of hard engineering. You can pause here to do so. Next, we have rock armour, commonly known as riprap. Now, these are large, very hard um, and resistant rocks like granite. Um, and again, they absorb the energy and protect the coastline and cliffs behind. So again, this is a hard engineering technique and I'd like you to pick one or two advantages and disadvantages for each strategy. Next, we have Gabions. Now, gabions are wire mesh cages and they're filled with rocks and pebbles. And again, they aim to absorb and dissipate the wave's energy back out to the sea, thus protecting the land or the cliff or whatever it is behind the area. So again, advantages and disadvantages, please. Groins, we've seen these before. So either wooden or concrete barriers. And what they do is they um, act as a barrier. So when the swash in longshore drift comes at an angle or a right angle with the prevailing wind onto the beach, it keeps the deposition um, on the, uh, in, in this case would be on the left hand side. So as the wave enters um, and it will prevent the material 
being um, transported further down the beach and it will actually build up the beach material. So if we could have a couple of advantages and disadvantages. Here you can see an offshore breakwater. Now this is parallel to the coast and this will force waves to break, thus reducing the energy and protecting the area behind it. We then have um, revetment, which can be wooden slatted sort of barriers um, at the base of a beach. Again, breaking that wave's energy and its swash and directing or redirecting that energy back out to the sea. And we have beach nourishment, as you can see here. Um, sand is brought in from elsewhere and literally pumped onto the beach to widen the beach and therefore absorb the waves energy as well. So again, advantages and disadvantages. And this now is a soft engineering technique. Another soft one, we've got beach drainage. So literally draining the excess water from the beach using a drain pipe. Another soft one, you've got dune regeneration, so rebuilding your dunes um, because they will therefore protect the coastline behind them. You've got dune fencing as well, by which we are protecting the dunes from further erosion. And then you've got managed retreat. Now, usually this is where um, the, we literally allow the sea to reclaim and flood an area of low economic value. So usually um, farmland or marginal land that doesn't have um, a very high economic value. So again, advantages and disadvantages. Now we need to build a little case study actually. And so you should have finished your um, advantages and disadvantages table now, but we need to build a case study. So we'll have a subtitle of manage retreat, please. Um, I'd like you to watch the video, so pause here and have a read through pages 110 to 111 and have a go at the questions beneath. Now, I have put model answers later on in the slides to answer all of these questions. But just briefly, if you pause the video here and have a go, why is it a suitable area? Well, actually, the, the land behind is very low economic value, so it wouldn't have huge economic impacts allowing this area to flood. Now, this is considered very sustainable because it is not putting any unnatural or man-made um, disturbances into the area. Okay, so the exam question that's due for Friday, please, guys, is below. So I'd like you to submit, submit this on Teams, please. So study figure eight, photograph showing sea defences um, at B Sands in Devon. So let's have a look. Oh, nice bit of riprap you can see there, can't you? So it's a four marker, so you'll want two distinct developed points and reference to the figure. No conclusion or anything's needed for a small question like this. So explain, so this is the why, explain how sea defences such as those shown in the figure can help protect the coastline. So we're going to talk about two that we can see in the figure and we're going to say how they help. So we'll start with the riprap. Now we know this is um, a very hard resistant rock that is put there to absorb the wave's energy and dissipate it back out to the sea to protect um, the area. Now, um, you can also see in the distance there a sea wall as well that has been used um, too. So you could then talk about the benefits of a sea wall. So again, absorbing the wave's energy and dissipating it back out to the sea. But just make sure you state two that you can see in the figure and then develop how and why you can do that. So another little question just for you to have a look at. I don't want you to do this. This is another typical exam question that might be seen and the indicative commentary. So if you have a chance to do the textbook questions on the following slides, you will see the answers so you can proof check your answers um, with the ones that we have prepared for you. Also, there are exam questions on each page. So if you have a chance to do any of these, these are optional, but you can then self check them alongside the model answers that you will find on the subsequent slides. Now, if you've got loads of time as well, you can attempt the geographical genius questions here based on these sections of the chapter. But again, these are optional. So in summary, guys, very well done. So I want you to think about which method of hard engineering is the most sustainable. So one that's not too costly, doesn't damage the environment, but it does protect. Now, I want you to think about which one you would go for and why. Well done, guys.